Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you're joining us from tonight. Uh, we're thrilled to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manor, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and uh, reflect on God's Word together. And, uh, we hope and trust your week is going well to this point, and we're certainly thankful for you to take a few moments and spend with us this evening. It's been a week of, you might say, decent weather in, in January in particular. It's been nice, the warmer temperatures, and here I am in the short sleeve shirt today, very comfortable with that. Of course, those in our church family or those that have heard me talk before in our in our recordings know I, I like cold weather, prefer cold weather, but honestly, that's primarily when it's supposed to be cold. I like for it to be cold because, you know, July or August, I'm not real sure I want it to be 30 or 40 degrees, but you know, when it's supposed to be cold, I want it to be cold weather. That's the way I am. But as we're enjoying today, this nice day and comfortable day for many of us, and I enjoy days like today for sure, there's a threat of storms coming through tomorrow in our area as the cold front comes through. And of course, I'm mindful of that. I hope everybody stays safe tomorrow for sure on Thursday. And I'm not a meteorologist for sure. I know many of us think we can do as well as meteorologists can in general, and they have a very difficult and tough job on their hands. But I know I'll often hear our local meteorologists, meteorologists, if I can say it right, and others when they're talking about weather, particularly this time of the year, in fact, I heard them say it, I believe it was last week, that it's the time of the year that rarely do we get a string of just perfect 72 degrees blue skies for a week. And it's a time of the year that usually it's colder, like 40s, 50s for high, maybe low 60s for high, and then really cool at night as far as around upper 30s or freezing temperature when maybe we don't want to get out too much. Or when it's warmer like it is on days like today and even tomorrow, that means there is more than likely a cold front coming through, which usually means some storms as that happens. And usually that'll occur every couple of days. And indeed, around here, we seem to be in a pattern of that happening. And as I was thinking about that and him talking about that, I thought, you know, in some ways, it's almost a, a picture of life in general. And that rarely do we have just a stretch, things just going perfectly in our life. Uh, many days, we have days that maybe are going well, we're thankful for that, but we know that she's going to drop at any moment. And, and we have the storms that come up that we have to deal with. And sometimes the storms that might even cause us to go into hiding for a while, much like though the weather might do that. Or we simply have days that maybe we're not dealing with storms in our life, we really just aren't doing anything. And it's almost like we are staying home to stay out of the cold and not really anxious to get out in the world. And so we, we have a lack of activity, um, a lack of focus sometimes when that occurs. And maybe even become a little spiritually lazy, if you will. And many days in our life, that's what it seems like. We're dealing with tough times, or we're dealing with tough attitudes maybe, perhaps, or just lack of motivation, that might happen. And on our good moments, we have our, our course of spring days, if you will, that are blue skies for a period of time, that are comfortable temperatures, not too hot and not too cold, and days we enjoy getting out, and days we have good hearts, and days, days we have good attitudes, and days are doing the things that we're supposed to do. Of course, and there are many people that have referred to our seasons of life, much like we have the seasons of the year, and there's so much truth to that. But this is not, we're not alone in those thoughts. We're not the first ones who think through it like that. And obviously, we know as long as, or really since the fall of man, there have always been people that have had to deal with days, have had to deal with storms, have had to deal with colder weather, if you will, that may be going to hiding, not ready to come out. We see that in scripture with a number of people and obviously we see it in our life even today. And I believe that's why there's so much in scripture about perseverance, about endurance, about not growing weary. We could spend really two, three hours, if not more than that, looking at all the passages that 
talk about not giving up or don't grow weary in doing good as you think about in Galatians 6 or he who overcomes we read through so much in Revelation there are a number of passages that talk about that and I'm convinced it's because these writers themselves experience this kind of life and as Paul and Peter and John went through their ups and downs of life they knew we would too and that's just in the New Testament. Obviously, think about David in the Old Testament, all the Psalms that refer to that, and Solomon, and so many others we can reference that had their own ups and downs in life, their own storms they had to deal with, and what they write through it. There are many places, like I said, we could turn to. Just read a couple today and tonight from out of the book of Hebrews, a couple of familiar passages, because as we have talked about before, our church family certainly talked about before, we know at least one of, if not the primary purposes of the book of Hebrews was written to a group of Christians, many of whom perhaps came from a Jewish background who was considering going back to Judaism because of the, really the pressures they were dealing with, the persecution they were dealing with, particularly from a social standpoint. And so the Hebrew writer, Paul, if he's preaching this, is, is really saying, understand, don't, don't give up, keep on keeping on keep on persevering and there are really a number of passages in the book of Hebrews even alone we could talk to and read about that I read just a couple Hebrews chapter 10 one of the let us statements really a couple of let us statements verse 23 let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see today drawing near. We read this passage often in its aspect of obviously the importance of assembling and meeting together and that is important. But sometimes we lose the focus of, of what the purpose of us being together it is and that is the need to encourage one another. Because as we do walk through life together, we know we'll need the encouragement perhaps to get out in the colder times of our life or the encouragement to deal with the storms that may be full of heat and electricity that we're having to deal with and help and protection in those times. Persevering, holding fast to those things. And in Hebrews chapter 12, of course, it talks about the great chapter of faith in Hebrews 11 and all the people that things they did by faith but also what they had to deal with even if, as they lived through by faith and it says in really really conclusion of chapter 11 it says first part of chapter 12 therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with per endurance or perseverance some say the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. I love this passage, as many of you know, it's so rich with so many deep thoughts, just in these first Three verses of Hebrews 12, but it kind of summarizes in some ways what the book of Hebrews is about, and that is let's run with endurance, let's run with perseverance. Looking to Jesus, because even when he was on earth, he had to endure storms, he had to endure seasons of his own life. I believe he went through cold times, cold times, cold times, and he was rejected times that even his friends rejected him. I believe he had times he probably felt lonely. Times maybe he just wasn't even sure about what all was going on. Even in his perfection, we must remember he was very much human. And times that he had to deal with storms as well, in a literal way, but also in a very spiritual way. So Jesus even had to endure much like David did, much like Paul did 
much like Peter did, much like John did, much like I have to, much like you have to. We must persevere. We must endure. We must not give up. We must not grow weary. Whatever season of life we're having to deal with, if it's the winter season of our life, or even in those times it's maybe warmer and stormy seasons of life, we still don't give up. We keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And I encourage you to do that, as I encourage myself to do that as well. Well, just some thoughts for us tonight here in the middle of the week. And not only do we hope and trust the week is going well, we hope you have a blessed rest of the week. We do encourage everyone to stay alert and safe tomorrow. If you're in our area and in the state, really, of Alabama's, the entire state is under a watch. We're mindful of that and prayerful for that. And encourage you to stay safe as well. It's always great to be together. And we also look forward to our time together of worship this Sunday. And we encourage and invite and remind all of you that you're welcome to join us this Sunday. We will assemble for Bible classes here at our church building at 9 a.m. We have classes for all ages. We then assemble at 10 o'clock for our worship. We do assemble here in person in our auditorium. We encourage you and love for you to join us uh, here. Uh, but if you cannot, cannot do that, our best for you to join us online. We will be streaming our worship on YouTube at 10 a.m. And we love you. <clears throat> love for you to join us that way as well. Again, we thank you for joining us tonight. And let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. <coughs> Father, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for being there for us. We thank you for giving us the strength that we can endure. And we pray that as we go through tough times, as we go through stormy times, as we go through winter seasons in our life, that you will help us always remember to look toward you, <clears throat> to look toward your son, Jesus, so that we can endure and persevere. Father, we know people that are going through tough times or in the winter seasons of their life, maybe recovering from surgeries, maybe going through treatments, maybe dealing with bad news, maybe dealing with loss of loved ones. We lift all of those to you. Ask you to wrap your arms around them in a very special way. Father, we know people are still dealing even with COVID and flu during this time of year. We're mindful of those. Father, we know as we go through and enter this new year, there are people that have high hopes for the year, perhaps some that have already gone through tough times, causing those high hopes to be dashed. And we pray that you will encourage them. Father, we pray, though, that in this new year, that at the very least, we always have a hope and a goal striving to be like you in all that we do and everywhere that we go. Help us to do that. We're mindful of the situation going on throughout our world, throughout our country. We pray for your guiding hands with that. And Father, we, as always, pray for leaders in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. And their hearts and minds be open to be guided by you in a way that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities and to take advantage of opportunities to share with others good news about your son Jesus. We pray all this in your son's name.